Now we're going to look at playing more than one note on the bass at one time. Now that might sound like a crazy idea to you, but can actually sound really nice and when there are less instruments playing in the group, it means you can fill out a bit more space. Here's what it can sound like. So what was I doing there? Well, I was playing what's known as tenths, which is an interval that's larger than an octave, which means it's a compound interval. But I'll show you what that is. So let's start on G, and that's the tenth there. So you can already see the shape. If you play a root note on the E string, now go one fret higher on the G string, and that's where the tenth is. Now let's count through the scale and see how we arrive at it being a tenth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's a B note, just like the third, but up an octave. And that's a tenth. So let's have a go at playing some simple tenths. What we'll do is we'll play that tenth from G, and then we'll slide up and play a tenth on a C chord, which is here, so fret eight, and remember, your little finger plays one fret higher on the G string. So from the G up to the C and back again. So after four, one, two, three, four. And you might need to use your thumb and index finger to pluck each string at the same time. Two, three, four. So we're learning that tenth shape and also using Two fingers at once with our left, our right hand, sorry, as well. Three, four. So what we've actually learnt there is a major tenth. Of course, because we know the B is the third and tenth in a major scale. But we know in a minor scale, that would be a B flat. So if we put B flat up the octave, on the G string, we find it's obviously one fret lower than we had on the major tenth. So if that's a major tenth, this shape makes a minor tenth, which is nice and easy, the note on the G string being the same fret as the note on the E string. So let's try playing minor tenths, also going from G up to C, but remember they're minor tenths. So after four, one, two, three, four. Now at this point, we need to know when to play a major tenth and when to play a minor tenth. Now we can use our knowledge of which chord, i.e. major or minor, is used at which point in the scale. And sure enough, the major or minor tenth will also apply. So let's play up the major scale, and this time let's do it all on one string, because our tenths have to have the root notes on the E string. So if we start at G, to get to the second, we know that's two frets higher. Then the third is two frets higher. Now from the third to the fourth, that's only one fret. Okay, now from the fourth to the fifth, that's a tone, so two frets. Fifth to the sixth is also a tone, that's two frets. And lastly, the sixth to the seventh, again is a tone, two frets. But finally, the seventh to the octave is just one fret, a semitone. Now the way to remember that is by a pattern of tones and semitones. So we start with a tone, tone, semitone, followed by tone, 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 semitone. So the pattern is two tones followed by a semitone, and then three tones followed by a semitone. So let's just run that together. So start on the G. So as we go up the scale, it's tone, tone, semitone, then three tones, tone, tone, 
tone, semitone. Let's do it again, but this time let's start from F. So it goes tone, tone, semitone, then three tones, tone, 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 semitone. And that's a major scale on one string. Let's play through that scale again, this time back on the G. So a G major scale on one string. And this time let's remind ourselves whether it's a major or minor chord on which degree of the scale. So we'll start on G, chord one is a major. Now chord two, upper tone, is always a minor chord. Upper tone, now chord three is always a minor chord. Then it's a semitone, and chord four, that's always a major. Now a tone, and chord five is also always a major. Another tone to get to the six, six is always a minor. And chord seven, which should be half diminished or more often than not, it's five, a five chord, but with a seven in the bass, and then a semitone to get to the octave. So let's run through that again, reminding ourselves which ones are major and which are minor. So. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and then half diminished. One more time. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and half diminished. Now you might be wondering, which tenth do we play on a half diminished chord? Well, actually it's more often gonna be a five chord with a seven as the bass note, five over seven, we're actually going to need to play what looks like a minor tenth because this works with any first inversion chord. So remember a first inversion chord is a note which is the third of the chord. So if the chord is D, a first inversion has an F sharp in the bass. So for any chord like that, any first inversion chord, you play what looks like a minor tenth and that will work on that chord. So now let's play through that scale using tenths. So nice and slowly at first, we start with a major. Now, two is a minor, so both on the same fret. Three is a minor. Four is a major. Five is also a major. Six is minor. And seven is going to, really going to be five over seven, a first inversion chord we use a minor shape for that chord. And finally, let's end on a major. Now those shapes work in any key. So let's do it one more time, this time in F. So starting down on F, so we start with major, then minor, and minor again, and major for four, major for five, six is minor, and then a first inversion, which looks like a minor shape for seven, and end on a major. One more time. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. First inversion, and major. So I'm now gonna show you how you can use tense and your knowledge of which one's major or minor in a song. Now you may know Delirious' song, Majesty. Let me play that song in D. So I'm going to play the chorus for you in the key of D. Majesty, majesty. D is quite a high key for that song to be sung, especially in church with the congregation. So often it's transposed down. So again, knowing that all the tenth shapes we've learnt are transposable up the fretboard, let's try that again, but in B flat. As this is a more usable key for a congregation, I'll show you where the notes are. Now the chords for the song are B flat, F, G minor, and E flat. So that's one, five, six and four. So the tenths are going to be major, major, minor, and then major. So let's find them. 
So the first chord is B flat, that's a major, starting on fret six. The next note is going to be F, an F major. We can find that fret 13, that's a major tenth. Then we go to a G minor, so that's up there on the first dot beyond the double dots, that's a minor tenth. And then down to E flat, fret 11, and that's a major as well. So B flat up to F, G minor, and E flat. Let's try that together. So after four, one, two, three. Majesty, and majesty, and again. and end on B flat. Now you'll probably hear if you're getting the majors and the minor tenths mixed up. So recap those at your own pace. But also go away and find another song and work out which chords are major and minor and see if you can find those tenths for that song. <laughs>